aviators, Colonel Dwight here with the Copper Chopper. Today's lesson is on setting the altimeter. Now you know flying a helicopter is quite a bit different than flying an airplane, but our instruments are basically the same. Let's take a look. First of all, let's take a look at our uh, pitot tube on this bird. It's right here on the mast. Looks a little bit different than an airplane, but it does the same kind of work. And then down here, I have the uh, static port. This bird also has one on the other side, too. As you'll recall, the PITO static system controls our airspeed indicator, the vertical speed indicator, and the instrument we're going to talk about today, our altimeter. Taking a look at our altimeter, you can see we have a current reading now of it's actually 220 feet below sea level. So something is not right because our field elevation here at the Melbourne Airport is 33 feet above sea level. So what that's telling us is is that the pressure has changed since the last time that I changed the altimeter setting. So let's call the Melbourne ATIS and find out what our current uh, altimeter setting is right now. Observation. Okay, so our altimeter setting is 3027. So what I'm going to do is insert that into the uh, Colesman window. 3027. And you can see now our altimeter setting is right about 33 feet, which is the field elevation for Melbourne. Now we've been talking quite a bit about pressure altitude. What is pressure altitude? Well, that is my indicated altimeter setting when I put the altimeter uh, setting at 29.92. So you can see my pressure altitude is really almost 300 feet below sea level. What does that really mean in, uh, for us aviators? Well, that would be what the airplane feels like at that, temp at that uh, pressure. And that will be the starting point to figure out how well the, the aircraft will perform. We start with the pressure altitude, and then we have to calculate what the density altitude is. So the pressure altitude in it of itself uh, won't give us a whole lot of information until we factor in the, uh, the non-standard temperature. Now, on a standard day at sea level, if my altimeter was at 29.92, standard day, standard temperature, standard pressure, then the altimeter reading would be zero at sea level. Okay, now I've got the altimeter set right at zero. And our Colesman read, uh, window reads about 30.2526 right in there. So let's say that I uh, increase it to uh, 30.95. And you'll see that my altimeter has uh, gone up almost 700 feet. In fact, it should be 700 feet. This, uh, for some reason, is not all that... Uh, accurate as you can see, uh, but we should uh, gain about 1,000 feet for every inch of mercury, or reading from our Colesman window. So if we went from a setting of 30 to a setting of 31, we should gain 1,000 feet. Of course, the opposite is true, too. If I'm at uh, 30 and I drop it to 29, I'll lose 1,000 feet. In fact, let's give that a shot. I've got it right here now set at uh, 31 and you'll see that we are reading 700 feet. Let's bring it back down to 30, which would be one inch. And you can see uh, 900 some odd feet we lost there. Again, this is, uh, as you can see there, it's not totally accurate, but uh, for your test, you'll want to remember one inch equals 1,000 feet. Aviators, I think from this demonstration you can see how vitally important it is to have that altimeter set properly. You always want to set it to the uh, latest altimeter setting before you take off. If you're on a cross country, you want to check the altimeter settings with the airports as you fly along. Fly safe.